Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about nutrition of protozoa. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So basically, protozoa are eukaryotes and they are single-celled eukaryotes okay so protozoa show different types of nutrition here we will see those types of nutrition so the first type is holozoic or zootrophic nutrition so zoo means animal that means this type of nutrition is animal like nutrition in this type of nutrition they eat solid food so what are the food options they can eat like bacteria diatoms algae larvae small fragments of large animals and plants all of these are different types of solid foods they take so we will see the mechanism of this holozoic nutrition so here we can see that the process includes four steps first is ingestion second is digestion third is absorption and fourth is ejection so here we can see this is the amoeba amoeba is one type of protozoa now these are the pseudopodia of amoeba and here it has the food particle so what it does, it first invaginates its pseudopodia like this. That means it is turning its pseudopodia and it is trying to engulf the food particle. And here it is successful in this process. Hence it engulfed the food particle. Now what happens, the food particle is now inside the cell and this invagination will be pinched off and it will surround this food particle and it becomes food vacuole now. So now the food particle is inside the food vacuole. Okay, so till this process, we can say this is the ingestion process because food is ingested. Now what happens in this food vacuole, acidic contents are present. So the food particle will be degraded in that acidic medium. And this vacuole contains many enzymes. Those enzymes will act upon the food particle and the food particle will be digested fully. So the food particle gets digested by the action of the acidic medium as well as enzymes in the food vacuole. This process is called digestion. Okay. Now next process is absorption. So what happens now? The digested food particles will be diffused in the cytoplasm of the cell from this food vacuole. So foods are here now. This process is called absorption. 
and the cellular cytoplasm will now utilize those digested food particles. If some food particles are extra, those will be stored in the cytoplasm in different granules. Next process is ejection. So there are some undigested food as well. Okay. So those undigested foods are ejected out from the cell. Uh, via this cell membrane or sometimes these protozoa have some openings in the cell. So through the opening also the undigested food particles are ejected out. So this is the simple process of this zootrophic nutrition. Okay. So here the same thing it is written that ingestion is the capture food and ingest it. Digestion it is intracellular because we have seen that the digestion is occurring inside the cell within food vacuoles. Contents of the food vacuole are acidic which kill the prey then enzymes digest them. Absorption the digested food from food vacuole is diffused out into cytoplasm and used up. Excess of food is stored in the form of different granules. Glycogen, paramyelin, paraglycogen bodies are such granules in the cytoplasm. Okay. Next process is ejection. So the undigested remains of the food are ejected out from the body through the body surface or openings. Okay, next process is pinocytosis. So pinocytosis is the similar process like that zootrophic nutrition. Here the difference is that in this process these cells ingest liquid food instead of solid food. So what happens here we will see. Okay, so this is the cell of the protozoa. Now the food is here. This is the liquid food. And the cellular surface is getting invaginated in this way and the food is coming through this path and now the channel will be formed in this way that is called pinocytosis channel. So this channel encloses the fluid or you can say the food from the surrounding media and the lower ends of these channels are pinched off as food vacuoles like this into the cytoplasm. And then the digestion will occur just like the previous case because here in the vacuoles they have the acidic content, they have the enzymes. So the downstream process is just like the previous process. Okay. Next process is autotrophic or holophytic nutrition. So we know that autotrophic means just like plants that means they can make their own food. So there are some protozoa who have chlorophyll just like plants and they undergo photosynthesis and make their own food. Such a protozoa is euglena. Next type of nutrition is saprozoic nutrition. So here there are some protozoa who absorb complex organic substances through their body surface by the process of osmosis. And those complex organic substances get digested and they get their food. Okay. 
Next process is parasitic nutrition. So there are two types of parasitic nutrition. One is non-pathogenic and other is pathogenic. One, two. So in non-pathogenic nutrition, we can say that these protozoa are food robbers. That means they steal their food. So what they do, they actually depend upon the host because they are parasitic. So they have some hosts, right? So they depend on their host and what they do, they just steal the digested food stuffs from their host and they get their nutrition and they do not harm their host cell so they are non-pathogenic the example is nictotheras nictotheras is the protozoa who undergo this type of nutrition Another type of parasitic nutrition involves pathogenic protozoa. So what they do, they also depend on the host, but they feed upon the living tissues of the host and hence they cause harm to their host. And they absorb the food through their general body surface. This type of Protozoa includes plasmodium, trypanosoma, etc. Next type is coprozoic nutrition. So coprozoic means these protozoa feed upon fecal matters of other organisms. Fecal matters, potty. Right? Okay. Next type is Mexotrophic nutrition. This is an interesting way. So this is actually the combo process of autotrophic and zootrophic nutrition. So what they do? They have more than one mode of nutrition. So you can see the example as euglena. So what they do, actually euglena have chlorophyll. Now, in the daylight, when there is sun, euglena can make their own food via photosynthesis. But when it is night, they can't do photosynthesis. That time what they do? They are the predators at night and they kill the prey and undergo zootrophic nutrition. That means euglena are very clever organisms. They undergo both autotrophic as well as zootrophic nutrition. Hope you understood my lecture. Thank you.